Okay, so now we're on video four. This is probably going to be one of the harder ones on the mind map. It's quite detailed. It's quite a lot to remember. Um, and we need to be aware of several processes that happen. And we could be asked questions about any stage of this. Okay, this is how it's going to look when we finish. So feel free to uh, fill this out on the mind map. Perhaps wait until I've explained all of it and then coming back to this part of the video. Uh, or of course, if you don't feel like you have enough space on the mind map, then if you can make some full notes on A4 paper and I'll check those when you come in. So here it is empty. Uh, first thing I suggest you do is uh, on the right hand side, this is a reflex arc and uh, maybe color it in and label it up just as I have. So um, and we've got three separate neurons, uh, a sensory neuron, a, a relay neuron and motor neuron. So I've done one blue, one purple, one green. Um, and then I've just labeled them up as well. Um, each of these neurons have got a cell body. Uh, we can see where they are in each of them, slightly different locations. Um, and you can see that these are very distinctive looking uh, neurons. Uh, we have axons. Um, so this is uh, runs the length of each of the neurons. Uh, and this is going to be how the information is uh, transmitted. Okay, a couple of things on uh, here. Um, on the end of the uh, blue, the sensory neuron, we have dendrites. Uh, so these are going to uh, detect uh, or sense um, information, uh, which is going to then run up the axons. Uh, if we look along the axon, at the end we have axon terminals. Uh, and this is where quite an interesting process called synaptic transmission takes place, which we will talk about in some detail in a moment. Okay, we also have the myelin sheath. Now this is a insulating material. It means that the action potential, it means that the, um, the synaptic transmission travels much faster along the axons. It actually jumps, so you can see something called the node of Ranviers. Those little um, gaps mean that the impulse can jump incredibly fast along these, uh, along these nerves, which is needed for uh, fast re reaction times. Um, we can see at the end of the motor neuron, I have labelled in the, the muscle. It's called the effector. So you know, once the, um, the information gets there, that'll be that'll be moving in response to whatever happens uh, around the relay neuron. Uh, and then I've just drawn in uh, the direction of the impulse. Um, so we can see that it goes from the dendrites along the sensory neuron into the relay neuron then things happen um, and then eventually we're going to get to the motor neuron along the motor neuron onto the muscle and we'll talk about this in some detail. So this is the reflex arc. So a range of sensory information could be detected by a sensory neuron. Um, this information is taken from the peripheral nervous system so sensory neurons are going to form part of the peripheral uh, nervous system. This is then going to be taken to the central nervous system, which is kind of the role of the relay neuron. It's quite a simplified diagram, and so, you know, some responses are as simple as this, uh, but generally the relay neuron will transfer the information uh, to, the, to the central nervous system. Um, so we can see that um, at the axon terminal, that's going to be our, our synapse, where it's going to be taken to the relay neuron. And then, as I said, the relay neuron um, distributes this information to the central nervous system the decision is made. Um, so the motor neuron will receive a, a message from the central nervous system delivered by the relay neuron. Um, this will pass through the motor neuron straight through uh, to an effector. Um, so this might be uh, a muscle to tell it to, to move uh, or it could be um, the effector could be a gland and it could be to, to release a hormone. Um, so as mentioned, so we've got an insulating myelin sheath. So this response is, is incredibly quick. And uh, if you think of a, um, a sprinter listening to the bang of a gun um, and how quickly that happens. OK, so on the left hand side, we have a diagram of what happens at an axon terminal. So this could be between a sensory neuron and a relay neuron, a relay neuron and a motor neuron, or it could be inside uh, the brain itself and between uh, any of the neurons that are, are located there. 
and this is something that we'll come back to again and again in psychology so we come to it um, when we look at psychopathology uh, we look at it when we look at uh, schizophrenia and aggression so this is uh, and a couple of the other units as well so this um, process is incredibly important to know very clearly um, what the different sections are how it works um, and be able to apply it to different scenarios so we have a presynaptic neuron so this is where the information is coming from we have a postsynaptic neuron so this is the neuron that needs to be communicated with um, clearly this postsynaptic neuron is waiting for a message uh, and then to pass it on uh, from that so a few more things are labeled up and a bit of color as well so um, taking it from the top we have an action potential so uh, or a nerve impulse this is the information that's traveled along the presynaptic neurons axon and is uh, rushing to uh, the axon terminal you might also hear the axon terminal called a bouton as well um, just another term for it um, once it gets to the uh, axon terminal it's going to reach the synaptic cleft which is uh, a gap between presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron so it doesn't communicate uh, directly uh, what's going to need to happen is going to need to be a chemical exchange of information across that synaptic cleft they're incredibly close together so it's a it's a fairly quick process um, so the chemicals are going to be called neurotransmitters it's a term we need to be very familiar with is a neurotransmitter uh, and there are many neurotransmitters in the brain where this could uh, this effect could happen um, in the presynaptic neuron, the neurotransmitters are surrounded by little bubbles. These bubbles are called vesicles or vesicles. Um, and what will need to happen is once the um, nerve impulse reaches the uh, axon terminal, these vesicles are going to be pushed out. Um, they're going to merge with the presynaptic membrane. The neurotransmitter is then going to be released into the synaptic cleft and it's going to drift not very far just across uh, to the receptor sites. Those receptor sites are going to detect the neurotransmitter um, and then we might see an action potential carry on. Um, so let's go through each of those stages in as much detail as we're going to need um, and then summarize at the end. Um, you can use a diagram to um, just explain the structure of uh, an axon terminal in your exam. And I really would recommend do, do the one out very, very quickly. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but it, it will get right in your head what you're going to be talking about. Uh, but the examiner can also mark it. However, to explain the process of what happens at an axon terminal, you need to be able to explain it in writing. Um, so there's nothing wrong with using a diagram. It will gain you points in the right situation, but um, that needs to be combined with the correct information. OK, so uh, the term transmission. Is important so this is um, impulses crossing a space uh, that the gap between axon terminals um, um, and sending the message to the adjacent neurons um, as we said neurotransmitters are the chemicals that are released from the vesicles on the presynaptic neuron and you can see in my little diagram um, some neurotransmitters being released now this is a really important distinction between different types of neurotransmitters and it's a process called summation. So some neurotransmitters increase the rate of firing in a receiving neuron. So if they're detected, they make the postsynaptic neuron more likely to pass an action potential along it. Some neurotransmitters, however, will actually decrease the likelihood of the postsynaptic neuron firing. So if there's multiple neurotransmitters, some are excitatory, some are inhibitory, then you might say, well, how does the postsynaptic neuron uh, decide whether to fire or not? Well, the combination of excitatory and inhibitory influences are effectively summed up. And if the net effect is positive, more excitatory than in inhibitory, uh, then the uh, postsynaptic neuron is going to fire. Um, if on the other hand, if it's an inhibitory, more, more neurotransmitters are inhibitory, um, then the postsynaptic neuron is less likely to fire. And we need to be able to explain that uh, in an exam. I know that question did come up in um, the most recent years. 
uh, AS exam and not many people were prepared for it. Okay, one thing we'll come back to again and again, um, especially as we look at the later units, are the role of psychiatric drugs. So psychiatric drugs are generally used by um, increasing or inhibiting in some way this transmission process of neurotransmitters across the synapse. So it might be by blocking the receptor sites, it might be by influencing the reuptake of these neurotransmitters. So these neurotransmitters, once they've been released, they don't just float around, they need to be used again. Um, neurons can fire many times a second, so these need to be taken back into the uh, into presynaptic neuron. And that's it. Quite a substantial amount of information uh, in today's video. Take your time, maybe listen to it again. Make sure your notes are very full and you're able to do this uh, from memory. Okay, so this is how our mind map should be looking now. It's uh, really coming together. Um, so if you're following along the mind map, take your time, write it out neatly, think about what you're writing before you uh, before you put it down in, in, in pen. Um, you're going to need to be able to describe for me a um, synaptic transmission and the reflex arc without notes uh, during the during the class. Um, and I also uh, want to see uh, if you can label up the synapse and the neuron from a from a diagram. Of course, uh, be ready for a quiz when you first walk in. Okay, excellent. I look forward to seeing your notes.